did you know nightshades are not just a secret book club at Nevermore Academy? Uh, something for fans of Wednesday Adams and the Adams family there. No, so nightshades are a type of plant that includes <coughs> that includes not coughing. <coughs> No, nightshades are a type of plant that include hundreds or maybe thousands of um, poisonous plants, berries, etc. Um, and they also happen to include plants that we consume on a daily basis, or vegetables and fruit that we consume on a daily basis. So tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, um, most peppers like bell peppers etc um, and there's a few other things as well and what all nightshades have in common because obviously they are all of the same type of or family of vegetable or plant or whatever what they all have in common is that they have certain let's call it poisons in them although I suppose it's not really a poison it's a it's an anti-nutrient it's something that stops your body from absorbing nutrients that it needs um, and that anti-nutrient is called a lectin or a, the groups of lectins so all nightshades contain lectins some the higher amounts than others in some foods you can uh, reduce or kill off the um, lectins through cooking especially pressure cooking or high temperature cooking or steaming etc but in other foods the you you can't do anything about it there's just too too much lectin in it um, and consuming too much lectin in general is bad for the body because like I said it's an anti-nutrient it stops your body from absorbing nutrients like I believe zinc magnesium etc which are electrolytes so th those are minerals but they're electrolytes that help with normal brain function so naturally they are very important uh, so the reason I'm talking about nightshades and lectins and poisons in food that we consume on a daily basis I was also doing some reading about gluten now most people in general are confused as hell about gluten um, up until recently it, even I believed it was just a mythical thing that was made up by a doctor or physician or whatever to make money but no when you look at gluten at its I suppose structural level as in what it is not not the atomic level but um, what it does as a um, as a protein so gluten is a protein the only problem is gluten is contained in a lot of foods that we consume and gluten is not um, absorbable as it, it's not what's the word I'm looking for it, it cannot be processed it's indigestible it's a protein that cannot be digested by the human digestive system and usually what happens is when you do consume gluten it causes inflammation in the gut and the digestive tract so the majority of the population, the global population, are divided into two, let's call them gluten reactors, celiacs and non-celiacs. Obviously, if anyone, anyone with celiac disease, or if you know anyone who's got celiac disease, when they consume gluten, it's potentially fatal, and it's because their body doesn't deal with the inflammation 
efficiently or quick enough. For non-celiacs, that inflammation is basically mistaken for bloatation or just a slightly uncomfortable feeling in the stomach. So when you eat certain breads or cakes, biscuits, etc., yeah, you'll feel, feel great for a few minutes because of the sugar rush, but after a while you get a slightly unpleasant feeling in your stomach. Well, some people less so than others and some people more so. I know for me, if I don't eat any bread for, say, two or three days and then do eat some bread, especially gluten-containing bread, then I, without a doubt, for half an hour to maybe a couple of hours afterwards, I do get a feeling of bloatation to the point where I feel like I'm swollen inside, like inside my gut. And the reason you would feel like that is because that's physically what's happening. There is inflammation, there's, there's essentially an allergic reaction um, occurring. So, completely gone off on a scientific topic there. Well, scientific, dietary, biological, whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's helped me understand why to eat certain things, why not to eat certain things. So, yeah, gluten, it's, it's bad. It's, it's not just something made up by the government to sell gluten-free bread and shit. And, um, yeah, weirdly, uh, stuff like lectins or other anti, anti-nutrient, nutrient, or anti-nutrients are hardly ever covered or talked about or sort of banned from use in foods etc because that means that supermarkets can't sell certain products so there, I imagine there's a lot of pressure from retailers to not release a lot of scientific information around this certain foods that we consume that are essentially killing us slowly or killing us faster so to speak because it would mean they lose profits and at the end of the day everything in this world that if you can purchase it there's a profit to be made and someone is making big gains from that in more ways than just financial I suppose that falls into the vicious circle of retailers sell poisonous foods, consumers consume it to their heart's content, they get all sorts of um, autoimmune diseases and inflammatory responses, then they end up having to go to the GP or hospital, they have to get prescriptions, they have to pay for that. And you have to pay for other drugs and fucking Gaviscon and all that shit. That nasty, thick liquid. Like, yeah. And I've just realised that one of the problems with bloatation is taking the likes of Gaviscon or Rennies or anything that reduces bloatation. What it's doing is reducing stomach acid. But the reason your stomach acid is increasing when it's bloated is because there's inflammation in your gut. Your body's trying to ramp up the acid to kill off the anti-nutrients essentially. So, like I'm fairly certain that lectins are killed, probably killed by acids. So, all you're doing by taking um, anti-bloatation medication so um, what's the word I'm looking for what's it called Rennie's Gaviscon it's um, 
like anything for heartburn you know it, all you're doing is you're suppressing the body's natural response to poison which is bad so you're just prolonging the effects you're prolonging the pain you're allowing that stuff to get into your gut and to touch itself and damage your the your gut lining etc you know it's a vicious circle shit this is probably a bit too much this is probably a bit too much on the technical side for a daily vlog anyway it's day nine of the vlogging I'm on my way to the office I'm nearly there I'm about two minutes away got a productive day ahead yeah looking forward to it I will catch up with you tomorrow same place not the same time because I can't can't guarantee what time um, and I hope if you've watched this far through the video right to the very end I hope you have a great day a great prosperous and productive productive day catch you later